What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be answering the second most commonly asked question that I get, which is what lens should I buy? So before diving into what lens you should buy, there's a few things you need to know because it's not really a one size fits all kind of thing. It really depends on what kind of style of photography or video you're doing, what you're into, what you want to achieve. So we're gonna look at different aspects of a lens uh, and that should help you decide. I'm also gonna give you my recommendations on what lens you should buy first, uh, the best all around lens, best budget lens. So without further ado, let's get started. So a few, there's a few factors you want to consider before buying a lens. The first being your f-stop or aperture. The second being your focal length. And third and most obvious is going to be the price of the lens. The first parameter you want to look at is the aperture. And that is denoted by f-stop. The lower your number is, the wider the mechanism inside your lens opens. And the higher the number is, the more closed down it is. And if it's open, it's going to allow more light to come in. If it's closed down, uh, it's going to allow less light to come in. Lower f-stop numbers give you a shallow depth of field, which means that it gives you that nice bokeh or background, background blur. So shooting at f1.4, for example, is going to give you a lot of background blur. Shooting at f16, for instance, is going to have the background and your subject and focus at the same time. Also, a smaller f-stop number lens is commonly referred to as a fast lens. The reason for that is you can achieve the same exposure at a much higher shutter speed. So when, you, when people refer to a faster lens, they're commonly saying that it's got a lower f-stop number. So a lower f-stop number uh, gives you a lot more background blur. Your subject's gonna be in focus, a lot of bokeh in the background, but these lenses tend to be more expensive. Not always, but for the most part, they are. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. Up next, we're gonna look at focal length. So this usually means how zoomed in or out you are. Uh, if you're shooting, for example, at 16 millimeter, you're going to see it's going to be a much wider shot. You're going to see a lot more in your frame. If you're shooting somewhere at, let's say, 100 millimeters, you're going to be much closer to your subject uh, and you're going to see a lot less. So if, for example, you're shooting landscape photography, you're usually going to want to have a wider shot for the most part. And usually portraits or macro photography, you're going to want a much longer focal length because you want to be closer to your subject. And for portrait photography, a, lo a longer focal length tends to be more flattering to the face because shooting a wider focal length is gonna have distortion and it's not gonna look so good. It's gonna make your model pretty much look not good. So you usually wanna pick your focal length based on the style of photography or video that you're doing. Uh, for the most part, it's best to have a wide range of lenses, but if you don't have the budget for that, then try looking for a lens that best suits the type of and style of photography that you're doing and your budget. Now touching up on focal length, there are two types of lenses. We have a prime lens like this one right here, and we have a zoom lens. Uh, from the name, a zoom lens zooms in, so you'd probably go from a 16 millimeter, for example, a 16 to 35. You could go anywhere from 16 millimeter to 35, whereas a fixed focal length or a prime lens, you'd be stuck at one focal length. So you might be wondering, and a lot of people do, why would you pick a fixed or prime lens over a zoom lens? Well, a prime lens has a few advantages over the zoom lens, the first being quality. Uh, this is not always true, especially now with the new technology and everything. Uh, prime lenses tend to have higher quality. Like I said, that's not always the case, but for the most part that holds true. The second being aperture. You tend to find much lower apertures on prime lenses. So you're going to find, for instance, a 50mm f1.4, whereas you can't get that f1.4 on a zoom lens. So with that said, generally speaking, we can assume that prime lenses are faster and have a lower f-stop, which you usually cannot get on a zoom lens. Now, with all the advancements, you could still get a low f-stop lens, for example, a 16 to 35 uh, f2.8, which is still considered really fast, but if you want anything below that, then you're probably gonna start looking at a prime lens. Once again, touching up on focal length, you're gonna wanna pick your focal length or the lenses 
uh, based on the style of photography or video that you do. For instance, if you want to do wildlife photography, you really can't get close to the animals, so you'd want to be as far as possible from it. Uh, you'd want to go with a zoom lens, 200, 400. You want to be as far as possible, but get the closest image possible as well. Whereas if you are shooting landscape, once again, more commonly used lenses tend to be a wide angle. Uh, something like a 16 to 35 would re be really handy for that. Uh, I highly recommend that lens. So if you're doing macro photography, you'd probably want to use a macro lens. You might be wondering what the difference is between a macro lens and a normal lens and a normal lens and a normal lens. Well, that's going to be the minimum focus distance. And what that means is it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's how close you can get to your subject and still have it in focus. Because if you're too close to your subject, your lens might not be able to focus if it has a different minimum focus distance. So let's say you have a minimum focus distance of 60 centimeters. Anything shorter than 60 centimeters, you're not going to be able to focus. With a macro lens, you can get really close to your subject, maybe up to like 20 centimeters from your subject and still have it in focus. That is the advantage of a macro lens. Now to answer the most commonly asked questions that I get, which is what lens should I buy first? Well, that usually depends on, once again, what I said, based on the style of video or photography that you're doing. But if you want the best all around lens, I'd recommend a 24 to 70 millimeter. It really covers most of the focal lengths that you need. Uh, a lower aperture, if you really need that lower aperture and depth of field, then go for it. If you have the money for it, go for it as well. But if you can't, an F4 would still be good. Uh, you could get a nice range of focal lengths without breaking the bank and most commonly you're going to be shooting at these focal lengths anyway. So that is the best all around lens that I recommend. If you're looking for the best value for money lens, then you're probably looking at this bad boy right here. This is a 50 millimeter f1.8 either by Sony, Canon, a lot of manufacturers make them. Uh, they're usually around 200 to 250 dollars and I think it is the best value for money. You get some beautiful looking images and videos out of them for the price that you're paying. So when starting off, I really recommend getting this lens. You get a lot of value out of it for the price that you're paying. Uh, there's really not much better you could get in that price range. So I think if you have a wide angle, the next lens you should get is this. So just to recap, what lens should you buy? Well, that depends on your budget and what type of photography or video that you're doing. For the most part, you want to try to cover a good range of focal lengths. If you already have a wide angle lens, then you might want to look for something around uh, 35 to 50 or 70 millimeters. If you have that range covered, look for something higher than that so that you have a good amount of focal lengths that you cover and you could use any of them whenever you want. For me personally, I have the 1635 F4, which I'm shooting this on right now. I also have this 50 millimeter prime lens and I have a 90 millimeter macro lens, which I like because I could use it for portraits. It's amazing for that and I could also use it as a macro lens as well. So if you're on a budget and you want a wide angle lens, uh, you'd probably look at the Tamron 11 to 16. Uh, first that's I think for Canon or Nikon, but you could use it on your Sony with an adapter. Uh, if you have the money, go for a 16 to 35 F4. Love this lens. It's really good. It's wide. Uh, if you want a, if you want some high quality budget lenses, then the Sigma art series is a great place to look. Uh, they're high quality with a nice moderate price tag. And once again, a good all around lens would be a 24 to 70, either F2.8 or F4, both would be good. You cover a large portion of the focal lengths and a good budget prime lens would be this 50 millimeter 1.8, the nifty 50. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video informative and hopefully it'll help you make the decision of your next purchase of a lens. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and that's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.